my name is Valerie and today I have a book review of Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. Uh, I'm not going to hold the book up the whole time because it's from the library so it reflects pretty badly but I wanted you to see the cover because it looks really cool. So I pretty much never do book reviews on their own. I usually just do a general wrap-up of all the books I've read each month. So the fact that I'm doing a review on this book should give you some indication of how many things I have to say about it. So unlike Jasper Ford's other two series, instead of taking place in an alternate universe, this book takes place in a kind of a dystopian future. Uh, it doesn't specify exactly how long has passed between the present and when this book takes place, but it's at least hundreds of years. In this dystopian future, British society has turned into a rigid caste system based on color but not based on the color of people's skin, but on the color that people can see. So throughout the book, the characters keep referencing the thing that happened, and they refer to people who existed before this thing that happened as the previous, that is, us. Whatever it was that happened left our descendants in this book with an inability to see more than one or at most two colors. As such, their society becomes obsessed with color. There are also strict rules in this society that the citizens dare not question, much less break. Some examples of these rules include the ban on the manufacture of spoons, the cause of an ever-growing spoon shortage, uh, the ban on the number between 72 and 74, and the law not allowing people of complementary colors, say red and green, to marry each other. The main character in this book is Eddie Russett, a red, who doesn't question the rules too much. He occasionally tries to improve upon them, but then the authorities call him out on it and he backs off. He never questions the logic or lack thereof in his society, and his main goal in life is to marry a rich red girl in his town who will barely give him the time of day, and even then only because he might be able to see a high percentage of red, which is highly valued in their society. But then he and his father, this world's equivalent of a doctor, move to a small town on the outskirts of their country, and Eddie starts to meet people to make him question everything he's ever known to be true. The plot of this book is pretty great, and I love the mystery aspect of it and how pieces of this mystery slowly reveal themselves throughout the book. The characters, for the most part, were pretty great as well, and some of them were particularly entertaining. However, where this book really shines is in the world building. Holy crap. This man's imagination knows no bounds. I thought that was the case with his other two series, but in this book, he drops you into this world with no explanation, no primer, and it is a world-building masterclass in show, don't tell. There are little details like when Eddie sees an ancient billboard and knows that the people in it are previous because their pupils look unnaturally large to him. So now we're like, wait, this whole lack of color perception thing, is there an actual scientific explanation for this? Because presumably, Everyone in this society has smaller pupils than we currently do. One of my favorite running jokes in this book is that the characters completely misinterpret and misunderstand the use of completely mundane and ordinary things from our current world. These jokes were sometimes so funny that I had to just put the book down for a minute because I was either laughing too hard or had to just like give my brain a minute to process how ridiculous this entire book is. I'm not even going to give you an example of these because I just want you to experience them yourself because they are a thing of beauty. I only have two real complaints about this book, and they're not small ones, so I do want to address them. The first is that there is a romance in this book, and I was not a fan of it. I'm just not. Honestly, I struggle to think of many books that have a romance that I am a fan of. There's a trope of couples starting out hating each other and ending up falling in love, and when it's done right, like in Pride and Prejudice and Much Ado About Nothing, it can be fantastic and entertaining, but here I just didn't buy it. I just did not buy it. When a character in a book has a crush on another character, I want there to be more of a reason than she has a cute nose or just some inexplicable feeling not based on any commonality whatsoever. Like, just once could we get a book with a romance side plot where the characters can actually articulate why they like each other and then do appropriate things to demonstrate that caring? If anyone knows of this magical book that m must exist somewhere, can you tell me what it is? Because I haven't found it yet. So my second major complaint about this book is that there is a scene in this book that is never entirely addressed, but could be construed as rape. And 
basically one character pressures another into sex for the first character's gain. And I won't go into what that gain is because it's complicated and I also don't want to spoil things because this is kind of near the end of the book. It is eventually addressed in the book and it is treated as a horrible, horrible thing to do, but they never call it rape and they never really have any consequences from these actions. Um, which, I mean, there, there aren't always consequences, but um, I just thought that what happened was so messed up on so many levels, and I don't think the characters were as properly horrified as they should have been. And it makes me really sad because, aside from those two things, I adored this book. Um, like I said, the world building is spectacular. I love the themes about being willing to question things and be your own person and how we have the power to improve upon our society and just the whole process of trying to figure out the mystery behind this whole society, I thought that was all fantastic. The worst part about finishing this book was that Jasper Ford wrote this in 2009 and has yet to release the sequel. It's supposed to be a trilogy and people have been waiting six years for the second book. There's actually going to be a prequel released either at the end of this year or next year, which I will be picking up immediately because I need more of this book's world in my life. I really didn't know what to read after this because why would I read a book about the real world when I can read a book where looking at certain colors treats certain diseases or where there are rumors of giant swans that might attack you. Like, it's just so fun. Guys, this book is so fun. I just love how Jasper Ford lets his imagination run completely wild and must ask himself the most ridiculous what-if questions to write these books. If this sounds like something you'd enjoy despite the two complaints that I had about it, I would still highly recommend this book. It gave me a lot to think about and it seemed a bit deeper than his other two series, which are also both excellent by the way. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of Jasper Ford's books or this book and what you thought, and let me know if you've read any other books that are completely wacky like this one. The only ones I can think of are anything by Terry Pratchett and anything by Douglas Adams, but if there are more, I would love to read those too. So until next time, thank you for watching!